Welcome back, Great Trails. We're going to start in a moment. Let's just give a minute for everybody to log on. Okay, let's do this. So today we're taking a look at RNA and we're starting with protein synthesis. Tomorrow there's going to be quite a bit of work that I'm going to give you guys to do. Let me just set my phone to silent. Apologies. There we go. Um, okay. Um, I see there's another request for me to upload uh, the videos on the lessons that we've already done. Guys, I've already done it. Okay, let me quickly show you, uh, just so that you are aware of where I'm putting these lessons. There's also recordings from last year's lessons already. I'm putting up these recordings directly under the lesson that we are discussing. So if you take a look at lesson five now, I'm going to put another recording over there, but there's already a recording under lesson five. Okay, then um, if you take a look, we did lesson four yesterday. There's the recording on lesson four that we did yesterday. There's another recording I did last year on lesson four. Also, if you take a look under, let's go under lesson three, two, and one, um, which is a bit further down. There's the recording under lesson three. There's the recording under lesson two. There's another recording I did in the afternoon session. And then under lesson one, there's the afternoon session recording. And there's the recording I did with you guys. So every single day, I am posting the recording on the Zoom lessons. Please, it's under the lesson. I place it and I edit the lesson. I edit the, the stream so that it's all together. So whatever recording we're doing, if we, we discuss lesson one, it's gonna be under lesson one. If we did lesson four or five today, uh, we're doing lesson five today, I'm gonna place it under lesson five, okay? Okay, let's do uh, lesson five. Um, just minimize this quickly. Okay, lesson five is RNA, and hopefully we're gonna get a bit into lesson as well today which is protein synthesis and one of the main ideas why we're doing lesson five RNA is so we can do lesson six and then also um, if we take a look at the differences between RNA and DNA that's also a very common question for them to ask in the in the exams so be aware of that so what does CAPS need me to know about RNA? They need me to know where RNA is. Okay, so there's going to be three types of RNA that we're going to discuss. We're going to be doing mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA. But we don't do rRNA in detail. We, um, mRNA, tRNA, we're going to use a lot. Okay, then um, mRNA is formed in the nucleus and then it's transferred to the ribosome. So it's in present inside the nucleus in the nucleoplasm, but it's also inside, outside the nucleus in the cytoplasm and onto the ribosome. Secondly, tRNA. tRNA is not found in the nucleus. tRNA is only found in the cytoplasm. And you're going to see why when we get to protein synthesis. RNA plays a role in protein synthesis. You need to know about that. We need to know about the basic structure of RNA. We need to know that it's a single strand instead of like a double strand like DNA. And then also it consists out of nucleotides, which is the same, it's the same thing that DNA consists out of. But the nucleotides are a bit different. Each nucleotide are made out of a ribosugar instead of a deoxyribosugar. So now it's a ribosugar, and then a phosphate and a nitrogen base. And then when we take a look at the, uh, the nitrogenous bases, ladies and gentlemen, we've got adenine, cytosine, guanine, but instead of thymine, we've now got uracil. So instead of thymine, I've now got uracil. So thymine, you're out. Uracil, you're in. We believe with RNA. Also, 
know the basic stick diagram of an mRNA and tRNA, what they look like, um, so that you can identify them easily during protein synthesis. Uh, sorry, let's skip right to the last page there. Okay, so location of the RNA, guys, mRNA, nucleus, cytoplasm. TRNA, only cytoplasm, okay. And then they're in close relationship with the ribosomes. And this is typically a diagram of what uh, protein synthesis would look like, but we'll get to that in lesson six. Let's move on to the next page. Structure of RNA, okay, it's a single strand. Not a double strand like DNA, it's a polymer, which means it consists out of monomers, may I become nucleotide. But polymer means it's, it's a long, it's a large molecule, and it consists out of different parts, which are all the same, in this case, nucleotides. It's like bricks making up a building. Then four different nucleotides uh, all have a sugar molecule, a ribose sugar which is also a pentose sugar, and it hasn't got, it's got an extra oxygen, so that's why we don't call it deoxyribose, we call it ribose, because it's got one more oxygen, um, as opposed to deoxyribose, which was one less oxygen in DNA, and then the nitrogenous basis, okay, oh, phosphate, a phosphate, and of course my sugar and phosphate are going to form a backbone, and then also the nitrogenous bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil, and again, not thymine, uracil, replaces thymine. Be careful, that one catches you guys out. When, when you are doing protein synthesis and you're de decoding uh, whatever uh, strand of DNA has to be decoded, you guys forget that T, uh, U replaces T, uracil replaces thymine. So be careful of that. Okay, formation of RNA. Okay, uh, we can see there's a sugar uh, phosphate backbone, sugar phosphate backbone, and then we've got the nitrogenous bases sticking out on the side. It's a single strand, not a double strand like in DNA. Um, and then four nitrogenous bases can occur in any number ratio or pattern, and this normally gets read from DNA. Now, each three nucleotides or each three nitrogenous bases makes up on the mRNA what we call a codon, and that's going to code for a specific amino acid in my protein that I want to form. Uh, so here, they, uh, here you can see the codons, each three nucleotides, each three nitrogenous bases makes up a specific codon. Okay, types of RNA, messenger RNA or mRNA consists of a single strand, mRNA, single strand uh, of unlimited amount of nucleotides that's uh, formed in the nucleus um, uh, from the DNA, it reads the DNA code and then carries that code to the ribosome. That's why we're calling it mRNA, messenger RNA. It's a messenger of the DNA code because the DNA cannot leave the nucleus. It's too big and so, uh, the mRNA reads a part of the DNA sequence and then carries that to the ribosome uh, where it can then help the tRNA to build up my proteins. The messenger RNA, single strand, and limited amount of nucleotides formed in the nucleus from the DNA template. mRNA carries the genetic code from the DNA, leaves the nucleus, and goes to the ribosome. And the ribosome are the construction sites of proteins. Second one is my tRNA. Uh, tRNA has a very distinctive shape. It almost looks like a little um, peg uh, or um, a paper clip type of uh, structure. And it's a single strand, but it's folded to look like, a, they say a hairpin. Yeah, I can see that. And um, it's in the cytoplasm, it's not in the nucleus, only in the cytoplasm, and it carries, it always carries an amino acid. It carries amino acids. There's the amino acid, let me get another color here. There's the amino acid, 
And on this side, it carries what we call an anticodon. Now remember on the previous page on the uh, mRNA, we said there's a codon. And now on the theoronia, there's an anticodon. So that says to me something. It says to me that these two are complementary and the one will go and sit on top of the other in a complementary fashion. Remember, when we talked about DNA replication, we said adenine, uh, guanine, and cytosine bond together, G, C, C, G, and then in the DNA it was A and T and T and A. In this case, it's going to be A and U and U and A. It fits together. Okay, so the anticodon will then read the codon from the mRNA. And you'll see that better when we go through the protein synthesis videos or when you go through the protein synthesis videos on lesson six. Now, theorina carries amino acids in the cytoplasm to the ribosome. And so they basically transporting these bricks to the building sites. They're transporting the amino acids to where the protein is being built. Then we have rRNA, it's a single strand, and it actually forms structure, a part of the structure of the ribosome, and it plays a role in controlling protein synthesis. We don't go into detail on rRNA or ribosomal RNA. Okay, important to know about DNA and RNA, it's just differences between them. This is a commonly asked question in the exams. DNA double helix RNA single strand, DNA sugar is deoxyribose, and then RNA has only a, has a ribose sugar. The nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine in DNA, but the nitrogenous bases in RNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and erosyl. So erosyl replaces thymine, and then also DNA will always find equal numbers because of the double helix, the double strand. So we're always, always going to find the same numbers of A and T and the same numbers of G and C, but because RNA is only a single strand, we're going to find that there's going to, um, the A, C, G, and U will occur in any number ratio and sequence, and that we're not going to find equal numbers of A, C, G, and U. Okay, guys. Then um, I also just put that table that we just went through just into a, a diagram form so you can visualize it. So there we can see the double strand as opposed to the single strand. And then we can see one less oxygen, deoxyribose, one more oxygen, ox um, um, means ribose, not deoxyribose. And then over here we can see the differences between thymine and then erosyl looks different. You do not need to memorize this diagram. Please don't go and memorize this diagram. It is just a way to illustrate the, this to you, the differences between DNA and RNA. Okay, let's go to lesson six. And then we'll go to the work that you need to complete. And probably tomorrow, when I do have my lesson tomorrow, uh, I will actually recap on lesson six. Do a recap on lesson six and give you a bit more detail on lesson six. But I want to go through it today because it's quite a, a, an extensive part of the work. Okay, quite an extensive part of the work. So let's quickly do that. Uh, no, I'm not going to make that change. Desktop. No, sure. Downloads. Yes. Life Sciences. LSGR12 Lesson 6 Protein Synthesis. Okay. So, people, what does CAPS need me to know about protein synthesis? Okay. Um, the involvement of DNA and RNA. What is DNA's role in protein synthesis? What is RNA's role in protein synthesis? Also, uh, we need to know the process of transcription. There's two processes that we're going to go through during um, protein synthesis. There's firstly transcription, and then there's translation. And then I need to know in transcription, and it's actually now describing the process, 
a double helix is going to unwind, and remember it needs to unwind before it can unzip, and then the double stranded DNA unzips, or we can say the weak hydrogen bonds break. It forms two separate strands, just like in DNA replication, and then one strand is used, only one strand. So here, here's the difference between replication and protein synthesis. In re DNA replication, both strands were used as a template for the new DNA. In the case of protein synthesis, only one strand will be used as a template, and it will form mRNA, messenger RNA, and then from the free new RNA, not DNA, RNA nucleotides in the nucleoplasm. The mRNA is then complementary bonded to DNA. C bonds to D, U bonds to A. A bonds to T. Why do I say T? Because it's still DNA. Okay. Then mRNA now has a coded message. It gets a message that there's a coding message. We call it a codon that it's forming from the protein synthesis. And then mRNA moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and then attaches itself to the ribosome. Then we get to the second process of protein synthesis. We're going to go through what we call translation. And then each tRNA, transfer RNA, carries a specific amino acid uh, that is found inside the cytoplasm. And then the anticodon fits onto the codon of the mRNA. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, tRNA um, brings the required amino acid to the ribosomes, and you do not need to know the specific codons, anticodons, and amino acids are. You don't need to memorize it. We will always give you a table, and you need to interpret the, the coding, but you don't need to memorize the coding of amino acids. Then amino acids become attached to the peptide bonds to form the required protein. And then so the amino acids bond together. And then we need to draw a simple diagram to illustrate the transcription and translation in protein synthesis. Ladies and gentlemen, then. OK, so what is amino acids? Amino acids are um, uh, uh, is what the building blocks of proteins, basically. Um, okay, so we have a process to manufacture proteins in living cells, DNA and RNA control. The protein consists out of monomers, proteins. The monomers of proteins are amino acids. We have about 50, uh, 50 amino acids bonding together at least to form a protein. There's about 20, I think it's 21, 22, 23 uh, different types of amino acids. Long chains of amino acids make up a polypeptide chain. So again, we've got a polymer, and the polypeptide chain then folds to form uh, a protein. Okay, so sequence of amino acids determines the type of protein that's going to form. Okay, so. How are we sequencing a protein? Each protein has a specific sequence of amino acids, specific pattern of amino acids. Uh, the DNA gene determines the amino acid sequence. Many genes on the DNA uh, for sequencing of many proteins, and each gene on the DNA codes for a protein. And then three DNA nucleotides, or three DNA nitrogenous bases, Codes for one amino acid. And we call on the DNA, we call it a base triplet. Okay, so there's your DNA. You can see the double helix. There's the gene. It codes for a specific protein. And each of the three nucleotides, three nucleotides or three nitrogenous bases, codes for one amino acid. Okay, now, just on transcription and translation, because the two words sound so very similar and close to one another, I just have a way for you to memorize which one comes first and which one comes second. And so we say, when we're making a movie, we have a script first. So transcription. 
And then only after we've done the movie do we translate it into other languages. Okay, so we have transcription first, translation second. Here's the basic process of transcription and translation, and I'm going to describe that to you as it happens in the diagram. And I think for today's task, all I need you to do is you're going to watch the videos on RNA and DNA. You're going to watch the videos on protein synthesis on the Google Classroom. And then tomorrow only, after I went through this again, will we then discuss, then you will do the actual tasks that I need to do. And there's quite a bit that you need to do. Okay, so let's take a look at the process. We firstly have transcription. In transcription, my DNA, here's my DNA, unwinds. You can see that it's wound up. It unwinds and then it unzips. So when it unzips, there's a section that, that falls apart. We've got some free nucleotides in here, RNA nucleotides. They come in and they read from the one string only, not both strings, just one string acts as a template. And they sit on top of the template and form a string of mRNA. They form mRNA. The message. So they, they get the code from the DNA and they're now going to take that code, they're going to leave through the nuclear pore, go to the cytoplasm, go to the ribosome, and now this section is what we refer to as translation. So the mRNA goes and sits on top of the ribosome. Then the tRNA, there's my tRNA. The tRNA takes an amino acid, in this case it's organine, and takes its anticodon and then complementary fits onto the codon of the mRNA. And so it actually is reading this code over here. It's reading the code because it's complementary. C to G, U to A, A to U, and so forth. And then what will happen is that its amino acid that is attached to it will attach to the previous amino acid with a peptide bond and then sit together and make up a polypeptide chain, which will later form a protein. The tRNA leaves and goes and fetches a new amino acid to start the process over again until the whole protein is formed. That's the basic process of protein synthesis. And I want to stop there because I know it's a lot to take in. Okay. And for today's lesson, you can see, I'm not even going to go to these. I'll go to these explanations tomorrow and go to them in detail tomorrow. What I need you to do for today, ladies and gentlemen, is I now want you to go to the Google Classroom. I want you to watch the videos on Dean on A and RNA. I want you to watch that video as well. Download the notes. And then go to lesson six protein synthesis and go watch those videos as well. And only after that, I'm not going to ask you to do the work, worksheet, sorry. But I do want you to draw the basic process of protein synthesis because it's a way of starting to memorize it. So this diagram over here is also in the notes. And I want you to draw it out into your books. Please draw it over a double page. Draw it over a double page. I'm sure if you go to the Mind to Gap book, your alternative is to actually draw it from the Mind to Gap book. Uh, let's just quickly, I'm going to open up the Mind to Gap book very quickly here. And 
then just go to protein synthesis and I'm going to tell you which what is the page on the mind gap. I went to the past, apologies. There we go. Okay, so in the Mind the Gap book, on page, it's page five. On page five of the Mind the Gap book, there's actually a nicer diagram of it. There's a nicer diagram, but please, you need to add the descriptions that you see here below. There's two, it splits it, I think it splits it up into two diagrams. So then you must draw both diagrams if that's the case. Okay, but no, it doesn't. It's one diagram with two descriptions. Okay, so please go and make a drawing of protein synthesis. Thank you very much for attending the lesson. Please, if you have questions, put it on Google Classroom for today, put it on a uh, 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 DM me, okay, per, uh, uh, give, uh, send me a personal message via the group, and then I will, if I see that it's a problem with, um, that it's a question that a lot of you have, then I'll, I'll, I'll give the answer in the group, on the WhatsApp group, or on the Google Classroom, but please keep your questions for then, because you haven't gone through this properly, you're still getting to understand this. So please go and watch the videos, draw the diagram, any questions, put it in um, either one of the two channels. Thank you. I will see you guys tomorrow. I think I've scheduled my, my lessons for tomorrow at 8 o'clock, so it's very early. Okay, so please watch out for that invitation.